what's the first thing you think about when you're looking at a new motherboard? Are you thinking about CPU or chipset? And if you're thinking about chipset, are you thinking about design or implementation? PC Part Picker has almost 4,000 motherboards listed. And in that list, we're going to take a look at one brand, Asus, one chipset, X570. And of that, we have 19 products. Today we're answering another subscriber question and we want to verify PCI Express resources. One to the CPU and two through the chipset. Now this question is on one of our videos, the Asus ProArt X570 Creator Wi-Fi Thunderbolt 4 motherboard storage options. And this question is from Charlie Lanes L. The breakdown of the lanes in the video is similar to my board and this will be the title of the video, the Asus Crosshair 8 Hero Extreme X570. I have not assembled a computer yet. I'm using parts from a Crosshair 7 Hero, an AMD 7-1800X. I'm reusing the 3200 Samsung BDI 4 x 16 and water cooling. My question is, where is my motherboard getting the lanes for the 10 gigabit network, Thunderbolt 4, and the add-in card for two sticks of NVMe located next to the RAM slots? I understand that NVMe 2 and 3 are disabled the same way as in the video if the second by 16 physical slot is used. Is this ASUS motherboard somehow juggling four lanes and not disabling anything additional? Our first response, hi Charlie Lanes L, welcome, is this your motherboard? Because I wanted to verify for the chipset. Every model is different. We'll check after you verify the model, which you did. Until then, we're talking CPU lanes for bifurcation versus chipset lanes for devices mentioned. And Charlie Lanes L responded, yes, that's the board. It appears to me that the only loss of lanes is with the second mechanical PCI Express by 16 underscore 2 slot is used. It will first go to by 8 and then M.2 underscore 2 from the CPU is used. It will go to by 4 and then M.2 underscore 2 and M.2 underscore 3 are used. The second PCI Express by 16 underscore 2 slot is disabled. I was wondering since this motherboard has two BIOS I was thinking. Under most circumstances, I would use a graphics card BIOS 1 using all 16 lanes, but on occasion, I would boot the second BIOS using M.2 underscore 2 and M.2 underscore 3 activatable in BIOS and use those slots for long-term storage. A location when using just the 16 lanes of the graphic card BIOS 1, the NVMe drives in M.2 underscore 2 and M.2 underscore 3 would not be visible to the operating system windows and be safe from a ransomware attack. Any light you can shed on how this motherboard is juggling the other resources mentioned above would be helpful. i also note in the manual, and this is really interesting, RAID configuration and optical disk drives are not supported on the SATA 6G underscore E12 ports. That's interesting. Since the time that I discovered your posts, I have spent many hours each day viewing and have watched all of your posts. Remarkable, useful productions. Thank you. We appreciate that and our response. Curious. I've never heard of a dual BIOS being used that way. Tell us more. Thank you. Glad we could help. Lots of information to digest. The rest of this will require a video. And that's what we're doing right now. Uh, I'm going to address that BIOS issue last because that, those are some fascinating ideas you've got. What we're going to do is outline all those resources. I'll address the BIOS issue once we get through with the hardware because we need to look at hardware, BIOS, and then talk a little bit about what's going on with the operating system, how that's going to play out. And what we've got to do is look at how those lanes are allocated, CPU lanes and chipset lanes. And there will be some occasions where I'm going to reference the Gigabyte TRX40 designator because of the experience we have of this. Uh, one, because of the PCI Express resources, CPU versus chipset, and because we also have Thunderbolt 3 on this motherboard. And I'm, I'm going to come back to that chart at uh, PC Part Picker System Builder, and we're also going to now go to refer to the specs about the motherboard. We need to check the motherboard, we need to look at the manual, and there's about six things there in the manual we're going to look for. We need to check out the chipset. We need to check out the processor so we understand how all that works. Let's now take a look at uh, the motherboard. Now, this particular motherboard, some information, we're going to go to tech specs, and I'll refer back to the YouTube video about the comments as we go through some of this. One question we're going to have is about the SATA, and I want to address that last question, or next to the last question first. Uh, right now, as we look at storage, based on the description, which we will verify and confirm also in the manual, is we have total support for five M.2 slots and six SATA ports, which means this motherboard is loaded. Considering the options and of all the X570s we've looked at, 
uh, specifically mostly of Asus, this one has got to be on top of the game. Now, that's always the conundrum. How do you allocate resources? And the way this has done this on this board, this board is loaded. But to have five M.2 NVMe drives and to have six SATA ports, as we look at the manual going back and forth, I also want to take a look at a document of an image because there's some other information that comes into play about this with Thunderbolt as we look at how those ports are allocated based on the manual, what we can see in the image on Newegg. Now this particular image I want to look at on Newegg gives us an indication of, of the layout of the board, but it also lets us look at the I.O. panel. And I'm going to come back to the I.O. panel for reasons of uh, how things work with Thunderbolt. But over here on the bottom right, right there are six SATA ports. So we're going to go back over the documentation on this particular motherboard as we looked for SATA ports and verified what we have. I'm going to take a look up here on uh, expansion slots. And again, we'll verify this in the manual. Two PC Express by 16 slots, one by 16, dual by 8. And if we look down further through the chipset, one PCI Express 3.0 by one slot. Okay. Next thing we need to do is let's go to support, see how many manuals are available. Hopefully just one. And we're going to find, yes, just one manual. Sometimes we've had as many as five manuals. One for the motherboard, one for the uh, BIOS, one about RAID, and sometimes a tear sheet with specs. Now from the manual, the first page we're going to go to will be page three. That will take us to the contents, and we're going to very quickly go down and, and see how we're going to lay this out according to PCI Express resources. Now, first thing in the manual of about six things I want to see. Number one, a chipset block diagram that we don't have. We don't want just the diagram of the chipset based on design. We need implementation. We don't have it. So we're going to have to go through and figure that out. Now, stuff to the CPU is going to be pretty quick and easy. Stuff to the chipset is a little bit more uh, involved but we'll go through one, two, three, and get as far as we need to to see what we've got. Uh, the next thing we're going to take a look at will be specifications. Then we're going to be looking here at shared bandwidth. We also want to look at motherboard layout. And then we're going to try to examine some uh, details in the BIOS if possible. So since we don't have a chipset block diagram, let's go to specifications. And we'll start from the top down. Now, he did not mention a CPU, but based on the technology and what we would suggest with this motherboard, based on the kind of motherboard it is, with all the resources, we're going to recommend a 5950. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And as we're looking at that, we're talking about 16 cores, 32 threads to build a balanced machine. So that's a Ryzen 5000 series processor, 5950, and we're going to go verify those CPU lanes. And yes, to tell you right off the bat, the CPU lane's 24, the chipset lane's 36. The CPU lanes are real easy to identify. The chipset lanes, a little bit more involved. We're not going to go through all of it because you get into some of the USB stuff. But we're going to split out what's there and see how that's done, how it's allocated. Because I want to, I want to go back and forth while this is kind of in a state and play. And we'll reiterate some of the things as we go through this. X570 chipset, four DIMMs. Recommendation, use two DIMMs. That'll get you up to 64 gigs because this is dual channel architecture. The way the uh, memory controller works on there, you'll have uh, better performance. But always test and verify. Graphics, we have two Thunderbolt ports. And looking at the image over here on Newegg, that's why I want this up. Because we need to talk about configuration. And I'll get that where we can see most of everything we're going to be looking at. We see expansion slots. To reiterate, two PCI Express with 16 slots. We're going to check that on the motherboard layout. And we have the one slot through the chipset, PCI Express 3.0 by 1, one lane. And our storage options, again up here at the top, five M.2 NVMe drives and six SATA ports. Okay, M.2 underscore 1, then M.2 underscore 2 and 3. That gets, uh, that gets tricky. And then down here through the chipset on the DIMM.2 underscore 1 and 2. And then the six SATA ports also through the chipset. And we want to remember each SATA port as a rule. One SATA port, one PCI Express lane. However, with this motherboard, because of a uh, separate chipset for two of those, which let's go back and look at the information that he gave us right here, RAID configuration. So what we want to know is what's the issue with the SATA 6G E1. And the SATA 6G connector, that takes us to page 29 in the manual, where it talks about SATA devices, optical disk, and drives via the SATA cable. Okay, here we go. If you'll notice... Up here on the right, 
we've got A1 and 2 and B3 and 4. So A1 and 2, B3 and 4, and C right here, according to the key, those are a separate chipset. And down here reading in the key, RAID configuration and optical disk drives are not supported on the SATA 6G underscore E1-2 ports. Now why is that and how does that work? Okay, normally when you've got SATA ports, you have native chipset support, which means you have BIOS support. The reason you can't uh, do that on those ports, that's a separate chipset. We don't know what it is. I think I know what it is, but I know for a fact. Also, because it's not listed and the way it's listed, what I, what I question and what I don't know is, are we doing one-to-one? -one? In other words, is that one SATA port, one PCI Express lane, or is that two SATA ports, one PCI Express lane? It could be. Uh, it's probably an AS Media chipset, and the ways to easily verify that, one would be to take the cowling off and take a look. Now, looking at the documentation, I can't tell. I can see where the chipset's at, but I can't see where that chipset might be. You'll have to look. Another thing you can do is plug in a device to those and test it. Now, you're not going to get an accurate test because if you're trying to go from, like, one drive to other, that would be the, the way to do it. In other words, put an SSD on those two uh, SATA ports and then run something across and see what you got. Now, SATA 3, 6 gigabit, 600 megabytes. Uh, it's going to be something less than that, a lot less. The other option would be to install something like Hardware Info or Bell Arc Advisor with something attached to it and see if it will see the controller and then see what's on the controller. Then you should be able to understand and see and notice what that chipset is. Then you can research it. Now, I'll put up a link to uh, the chipset that I think it is to reiterate AS Media. And there's two possibilities to reiterate. You either got one PCI Express lane to two ports or you got one-to-one, -one, one PCI Express lane for each port. Because I know the other four, four PCI Express lanes, you got four SATA ports. But you got a total of six, but it's with that, to reiterate, extra chipset. And when you've got an extra chipset like that, you have to think about, to use that chipset, you can't use it from boot because it takes a driver. A driver means an operating system. Now, I'm going to go back to page three, back to the specification summary, which is on page seven. We verify the Thunderbolt ports. We've still got to verify the slots. So I'll go back to page three. And uh, I'm going to cut to the chase here, and let's go to the connectors with shared bandwidth. We're going to refer to this probably more than once. I'll come back to that. Now, verifying in this document where the slots are at, PCI Express was 16 underscore 1 underscore 2, and then PCI Express by 1. Okay, underscore 1 and underscore 2. And then we have three M.2 drives. Let's see. M.2 underscore 1, and then let's scroll down here, M.2 to the right, underscore 2, and then right here, M.2 underscore 3. And the other two, and there's the X570 chipset, and the other two are up here on the right on this DIM connector, and that is DIM.2 underscore slot for two more M.2 drives. Now, these two slots are both to the CPU. This third slot through the chipset. And this 1, 2, and 3, all three of those M.2s are to the CPU. And these two M.2s are through the chipset. So now we need to take a look at the CPU. Uh, we'll see what AMD has, not all the information we want, but then I'm going to go to B&H, which tells us exactly we have 24 PCI Express lanes. To me, that's a detail that should be there with AMD listed, but they don't, some of the obfuscation. Because when I'm looking at CPU, no matter what all the whiz bang it does with all the blah, 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 First thing I want to know is how many PCI Express lanes do we have and what are they? Second thing I want to know is I want to know what chipset is supported on that CPU because that tells me a lot about the processor. And that's what we're doing now is verifying that because the motherboard, to reiterate, as I've said about this system, is the foundation of the computer and the chipset is the foundation of the motherboard. And we're going to verify how those resources work because if we've got 24 PCI Express lanes, let's take a look at the CPU. Now, to reiterate, we're looking at a Ryzen 5950. We're going to go to specifications, and I want to see full specifications, although that's kind of a misnomer. We verify we've got 16 cores, 32 threads. I like that. I like the speed on it. I like the cache. I like the fact that it's PCI Express 4 connectivity. This is really where they ought to list this, PCI Express 4, DDR4, up to DDR4 3200. I get that, but I like to know the lanes. It doesn't list the lanes here. And if we look at key features, those lanes ought to be right there. So we're going to go to another page. This is with B&H. 
we'll take a look at specs and right here the maximum number of PCI Express lanes 24 PCI Express 4.0 that's what I want to verify now let's take a look AMD with the chipset specifications and right here it clearly spells out what matters is we have 36 PCI Express 4.0 lanes up to 14 SATA ports remember we've only are going to count four because those are through the chipset the other two to reiterate are on a separate chipset up to four USB 3 ports and up to 12 USB-C ports 10 gigabit yeah well we don't have all that but what we do have are 36 PCI Express lanes okay I'll have to refer to this machine in front of me just a little bit because keep in mind if we've got 24 PCI Express lanes to the CPU how does that break out okay your CPU to chipset is four lanes take that away that leaves 20 if we have 20 lanes on the motherboard we use that primary M.2 NVMe drive that's four lanes take that away that leaves 16 lanes okay how do you allocate 16 lanes when you've got two slots and you've got two M.2 NVMe drives something's got to give something's got to give in a big time and that's where we suffer on this motherboard whereas with a motherboard like this not so much so looking at the manual on this same page which is page 13 the key to this right here is a configuration and that's kind of the consternation okay PC Express plus 16 underscore 1 first scenario 16 slot good to go that means your GPU is in a 16 lane slot however if you're going to use PC Express plus 16 underscore 2 then those two slots scenario number two are each in about eight lane slot electrically and if you go to scenario three and scenario four if you're using PCI Express with 16 underscore 1, you have 8 lanes. Then PCI Express with 16 underscore 2, if you're going to use M.2 underscore 3, becomes 4 lanes and 4 lanes. However, if you go to scenario number 4 for PCI Express with 16 underscore 1, and if you want to use those two M.2 drives, which is M.2 underscore 2 and M.2 underscore 3, which is each 4 lanes, well, you do the math. Any way you slice it, how do you take and divvy up 16 lanes? You got eight, four, nothing, and four, or you got eight, nothing, four, and four. So one way you get to use your PCI Express plus 16 underscore two slot, which is a four lane slot. The other way it doesn't exist, and you get two M.2 drives. And those are tough choices to make, but those are really smart choices that they have offered. Now, those are configurations based on when you plug in the device has nothing to do with how the BIOS is configured. So if you've got a BIOS 1 and a BIOS 2, those devices are going to show up the same because once they're plugged in, they're seen. There's nothing in the BIOS to turn those off and on. So uh, the only way to do something like that is with Linux where it can grab resources and reallocate that stuff to, to enumerate those things on the bus. But we're talking Windows, we're not talking Linux. And for a default configuration, remember, the first reason we had dual BIOS, does anybody remember that? It was because of viruses. If we can write to it, so can a virus. So if you've got anything that's got a BIOS or a firmware on it, if we can write to it, so can a virus. I haven't heard of one in a long time doing it, but I have heard of it and I've seen motherboards destroyed. I've seen video cards destroyed because of problems like that. Something to think about. And also brings up an issue about Thunderbolt, but I'll, I'll get to that. But the way the CPU lanes are addressed on this board, if you make any one of these choices, either way, your GPU is in eight lanes. Okay, eight lanes are fine for a GPU, but I wouldn't take it down to four lanes. Four lanes would be the equivalent of like uh, if you had an external GPU and you wanted to plug it in through Thunderbolt, that's four lanes. Because remember, Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 are both based on PCI Express 3. And even though Thunderbolt 4 bi-directional is 40 gigabit, that's the spec and that's the advertising from Intel. But it's only a little over actually 31 gigabit because PCI Express 3. It is what it is. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to some more of that here in just a minute. But this issue with CPU lanes, that's the way those are laid out. That's the way that's allocated. And that'll work as long as you're good with that. But you can't do like we've done in this machine, where we have two 16-lane slots mechanically and electrically, and then we have two more 16-lane slots mechanically, but electrically they're eight-lane slots. So that allows us to have a GPU in one 16-lane slot electrically, but we can also have a quad card where we can add four more M.2 NVMe drives. Now this motherboard has resources for four M.2 drives. Two are to the CPU, and we have two more under this one long heatsink that are through the chipset. And over here, we have Thunderbolt 3 as an add-in card. And the big thing you gain with this machine is you have Thunderbolt 4. If you could settle for Thunderbolt 3, 
then I would say a high-end desktop or because of the price of this motherboard and all the resources, I would leap over it and look at a workstation for the price of the motherboard. I'll come back to that in a minute. Now what we need to look at, and this is what's really fascinating, we have 36 lanes to work with and the way they're allocated are amazing. And as near as I can tell, they're dedicated. Let's go back to the contents. This time I want to look at the motherboard layout. And most everything on here has a label. What I wanted to look and see is if there's any way we can uh, ascertain right down here on these two SATA ports on the bottom if there's a chipset in here. And I don't see any indication. But again, to reiterate, as we look at this drawing, if you remove all these cowlings, I would expect you would see that chipset in this area. It'll be small, but it'll be, it should be readable. Okay, now I want to address this issue with Thunderbolt. We have two Thunderbolt ports. Thunderbolt port 1, Thunderbolt port 2. Now, Thunderbolt does three things. What are they? Number one, it can route power. If you want to do that, be sure and plug in the power delivery for that to get that power routed out. Number two is data delivery. That's the one I'm a fan of. And number three is if you decide to route video, but you've got to get video ingested into Thunderbolt to get video out of Thunderbolt. And that's the two connectors we're looking at now. So if you want to have video routed through Thunderbolt, DPN1, and then right up here at the top, DPN2. And these display port imports allow you to route video from your GPU out of your GPU into Thunderbolt. In other words, once you plug that in, then on DP1 will be Thunderbolt 1, and then on DP2, you'll have video coming out of Thunderbolt 2. As near as I can tell, those are dedicated resources. So let's start at the top. Let's go back to the question he had. 10 gigabit Ethernet. Okay, as we look at this drawing, right there is 10 gigabit Ethernet right there on that port. And we've outlined Thunderbolt 4, 1 and 2, and how to get video routed into that. And you can also see we've got various USB 3 ports. And, of course, any more USB-C ports, since this is Thunderbolt, is going to come off these other motherboard connectors that will route it to the front of the case. That would be USB-C. And those two are the 19-pin headers, so that would give you two USB-3 ports and two USB-3 ports, which is a lot. And then you get that one USB-C port to the front. If you've got a case, that will support it. So back over here on the panel, looking at the question, 10 gigabit, Let's go to the manual. Now this is on the specs page, page 8. And we're using the Marvel 10 gigabit Ethernet. And then the 2.5 gigabit is Intel. I wish that had been Intel, but it's not. But anyway, anyway, we get 10 gigabit Ethernet. And if I do a search for 10 gigabit Ethernet, it talks about the panel on the I.O. ports, page 9. Takes us to rear panel connectors, which we looked at and verified up here in the drawing. And there's a star by that. Refer to the tables on the next page for LAN port LEDs. Yeah, okay. Uh, no big deal about that. And then to reiterate, there's the information about the display port. Uh, display port in two, uh, 2 and display port in 1. And then, of course, the Thunderbolt ports. I like drawings, but I also like to be able to see an actual picture. Sometimes there's a difference. And I like to see the actual image of the motherboard. And so many of the motherboards now, they're covering stuff up where you can't really see anything. I like to be able to see the stuff. I like to know what's what. And as near as I can tell, there's nothing else in the document that I can find that I can ascertain that says anything about that being a shared resource. So what we verified is we have one resource, 10 gigabit Ethernet, and that's hardwired. It's fixed. We looked at a previous motherboard where it was an add-in card, but because it was an add-in card, it was uh, this or that. You couldn't do both which was a real bummer. This is hardwired. And as we search the manual for Thunderbolt under USB, that has a star about charging. If you want charging support, be sure and plug in the uh, six pin PCI Express graphics card connector for power delivery. I like the idea of Thunderbolt for data delivery, whether it's just data or if it's for uh, a digital audio interface. Two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports and under graphics, Two Thunderbolt ports, USB-C support, DisplayPort 1.4, and Thunderbolt video output ports. I always like to confirm the information because you never know, you might see something. And anything we find in a manual, in other words, if there's a discrepancy on the motherboard, which I haven't had, but we have had discrepancy where what the documentation says and what you see in the BIOS can be two different things. And some of this stuff I can tell you generically what you're looking for, but you have to tell me specifically what you're looking at. So we don't see anything to indicate otherwise 
Thunderbolt is a dedicated resource. So we've identified 10 gigabit Ethernet, four PCI Express lanes through the chipset. Device number two, Thunderbolt four, four PCI Express lanes, that makes eight. We've also identified item number three, which is the four SATA ports, four PCI Express lanes, so up to four, eight, 12. So you can kind of see where that's going. You can go all the way through that until you get to 36. It kind of gets in the weeds. But what's important to know is uh, those three items that we just outlined are all dedicated resources. Now, the other issue about those other two M.2 drives, let's take a look at that. Because our primary concern is always, number one, PCI Express lanes, and then number two, M.2 drives. And the way they've juggled the chipset lanes is pretty smart, considering what's on this board. But this is an expensive motherboard. Now, looking at the DIM.2 slot, it allows you to install a DIM.2 card to support additional M.2 PCI Express NVMe SSD drives. Okay, here's the details. DIM.2 underscore 1 and DIM.2 underscore 2. PCI Express 4.0 by 4, so that's each four lanes. So that gives us 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. So we're at 20 out of those 36 PCI Express lanes. All those resources from everything we're able to uh, glean from this documentation says all that's dedicated resources, which is pretty wicked and a pretty neat way to allocate those resources. I like it. And here's a good drawing on page 63 that gives documentation of a nice little heat sink. Nice. And yes, keep in mind, this is all PCI Express 4. The only thing I remember PCI Express 3 was on that single third slot, which is about one slot. So anything that would go in that is probably going to be PCI Express 2 or PCI Express 3. So it shouldn't be an issue. But uh, I like the fact PCI Express 4 on this particular slot has got a heat sink on it. Because remember, with PCI Express 4, you have the possibility for an M.2 NVMe drive, third generation, to be around 7,000 megabytes. Whereas if it were PCI Express 3, you're around 3,000 to 3,500 megabytes per second. So faster it goes, the hotter it gets. But uh, this, is some, this is some wild motherboard you've chosen. Now to address other issues in the BIOS, and I think we need to refer to this chart. We've identified CPU lanes. We've identified the chipset lanes that matter for the devices as we've outlined them. And again, you can go further on that to pick up all that on USB. We've also covered those motherboard devices for the what, why, and how of the problem and the solution trying to identify that. Uh, the only thing I think we've got left now is uh, we need to revisit this BIOS issue that you've talked about. And I think referring to this chart is probably the best. On a system where you've got a slot where you can go into the BIOS and make a change on something in the BIOS, for example, we have slots that we can go in and bifurcate. What does bifurcate mean? To split or to fork. So that I take a 16-lane slot, like in this computer, if I had a quad card in here, because that's a 16-lane slot if I bifurcate it, so I can put four M.2 NVMe drives on a card. Now, because that's a BIOS setting, that's a setting that I can turn off and on. You don't have a BIOS setting where you can turn that kind of stuff off and on. Everything that you've got, once something's plugged into the motherboard, it's going to be seen by two BIOSes. So to reiterate, whether you uh, want to try to use the BIOS that way, because of the way the BIOS has graduated, the only two things I'm aware of that you can really control within one BIOS for BIOS settings, not necessarily within two BIOSes, because it's a matter of a backup BIOS. To be able to do your memory configurations and to be able to do your overclocking configurations where you can set those and go through those boots. And ASUS motherboards are really good for that kind of stuff. So those are the things where you would set and make those BIOS changes. But to reiterate, when you plug that card in, it's going to be seen. The only way for that card not to be seen is to unplug it. So I hear what you're saying, but wrapping my mind around how that would work, there's no setting in the BIOS. If you find one, I want to hear about it. We'd like to know. So I hope this helps. I hope we've answered all your questions. I want to take you back one more look at PC Part Picker. Now this particular motherboard, if I add it and you take a look, that's an expensive motherboard. The reason I want to point that out, this is a TRX-40. You have a, uh, and most of the motherboards listed, they also have on PC Part Picker System Builder TRX-40 motherboards listed. However, because of processors right now, you can get a processor for this. My suggestion, if you had not built this system, would have been to have jumped over what I have in front of me, which is a high-end desktop, the TRX-40, and gone to a WRX-80. Based on the price of the motherboard, based on all the things you're trying to do, the only thing you would have sacrificed would have been uh, Thunderbolt 4, 
you could have had Thunderbolt 3. However, because of the requirements of all the motherboards, of which now MSI has joined the fray, but no Thunderbolt. Dell has also joined the fray, but I don't see anything about Thunderbolt being mentioned. Uh, the only way you're getting Thunderbolt on the WRX80 is going to be Thunderbolt 3, and that's going to be through Gigabyte. So you've got an ASUS motherboard. You've got a great machine. Once you put it together, it's going to be, it's going to be wonderful for you. And as long as you use it as is, the question you've really got to decide is, are you going to put in all five M.2 drives? Or do you want to put in that primary and those two secondary through the chipset? If you do, I wouldn't raid those together because those through the chipset are going to be a little bit slower than that one. That one, leave it by itself. And then your GPU can be in a 16-lane slot all by itself. But that's a decision you've got to make. You've got the resources. You see how they're managed. I hope that helps. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. I want to thank you guys for watching. Welcome. We look forward to seeing you next video. We're out.